Hello and welcome to Hey, I Loved That Movie, the podcast where we rewatch the films we loved when we were younger to see if they still hold up. I'm Dan. I'm Michael. And I'm Helena. And for this episode, we have a special guest. It's Mish Wittrup. Hello. Thank you for having me. Is this when I introduce the film? It's yes, me. which oh. movie did you bring for us to watch? <laughs> Hello, I'm Mish. I asked uh, you guys to watch Labyrinth, Jim Henson's Labyrinth. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So what what was this movie to you as a as a kid then was it one you watched a lot or mm, So when I, I was gr- so. <laughs> I was I was born in 88 right So I'm quite yeah. old and I um I remember like very 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 vividly VHS tapes right I'm sure a lot of people that you've had on remember VHS tapes yeah, but we yeah, had. We're just about I don't know how young you think yeah. we are. Yeah. We yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know when we're I the, first saw you guys. Pre- <laughs> I remember DVDs becoming a thing. No, you guys are you guys are youthful as fuck. Like I'm old, so like I was like I I, I looked at you all and went, "You're all children." So I'm gonna have to be like oh. a VHS tape, kids. Um, no, yeah, I, I think uh, you're like four years older than me. It's fine. Okay, cool. Um, so we, I grew up like my. I remember my mum had a lot of VHSs. My mum and dad. And the kids, meaning my sister and I, had about three that I can mm. remember yep. Yep. very Standard. well. And I watched them on repeat. And the and Labyrinth was one of them. And the reason I didn't choose the other two is because one of them was Annie the Musical, um, the original <laughs> Annie musical to VHS tape. Um, and then the other was The Little Mermaid, which I thought was a little bit almost too topical. And um, I wanted to be you know, cool and Indian shit. So I chose Jim Henson's Labyrinth. But um, oh, it was no. it was like one we, of my favourite movies as a kid. <laughs> we just did an episode on The Little Mermaid because of the other movie coming out. There you go. Yeah. See, I knew, but we're I knew. not Indian cool and shit. No, we're desperately trying to. <laughs> but know, no, it was so cool because that. I I watched those three movies like on repeat like yeah. i would just like they were just on a rotation and watching i rewatched labyrinth again today um in prep for this pod and i remember vividly the parts that i would rewind and rewatch right. over and over <laughs> and over again it's it's a very nostalgic film for me because it's Can very my childhood what, what scenes yeah go um from what you know party? about me sorry the bubble party no. So she's like in the No? Okay. No, I would fast forward that bit. I thought that was boring as shit. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to see these two people make love. I want to see like um like cool dancing and songs and stuff. Hmm. Yeah, like the yeah. dance magic dance bit. Yes. <laughs> Which is yeah. the main bit that I remembered. But not the actual song, the intro bit of yeah, You yeah. Remind Me of the Babe, because for some reason that was a bit me and my friends did all the time. <laughs> yeah. And and it's gone viral on TikTok now. Like there's a lot of oh, people of that use the "You Remind Me of the Babe" TikTok. Like it's like a TikTok song. That's when you. That's when I knew I was old. Is when stuff that's like these vintage, <laughs> vintage classics started coming out on TikTok. Kid, like kids are discovering David Bowie now, and it's like yeah, no, I know. No, no, it's like oh, stop no. that, <laughs> stop it right now. I like. Here's another one. Like I've been like Hosier, right? So this is so completely unrelated to the movie. But do you guys know Hosier, the singer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's he awful. releases like "Take Me to Church" like uh, I don't know, ten years ago or some shit. And I was like, that song's yeah, really? sick. So a long time is ago. It, is it ten? Mm. No. Oh, yeah. Surely I think it was. Two, it was like 2012. <laughs> yeah. Oh it was something like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're old. I think something like that. Whatever. Um, and I yeah, remember. No, I believe you. To- I'm just sad about it. And now he's just released a new album and he's done it through TikTok, like releasing clips from TikTok. And people are like, wow, man, this old man is really cool. And he's from the olden days and he used to release old songs and now he's releasing some new stuff. But he's cool, guys. And it's like, I remember listening to him at university not that long ago. What is wrong with children? He's he's like (laughs) mid-30s. Like, he's not an old guy. No, um, be, but they've released fair, that with David of years Bowie. Old. It's like David Bowie is like this old guy from the olden days. Yeah. That blows my mind. Yeah, it's gone from retro to vintage, mm-hmm. and soon it's going to be classic. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah, it's it's a horrible transition to watch. Actually, petrifying. 
Um, I've been feeling really old recently. And, Why? Um, it's I, I've been working at university. I've got a um, okay, part-time yeah. job at the university, and mm. I was the only person on campus the other day wearing skinny jeans. <laughs> yeah, old, old, old as. Yeah. I, and I um... saw a girl the other day in low-rise jeans with her thong poking out. And I yeah. was like, no, we've been through this. You don't do that. We we've come so back hard. around, though. Um, yeah. I, got, yeah. I got invited um, to do, like, a Zoom with my old university, like, with the graduating students, because I'd graduated mm. 10 years ago. And it was like, how, like, how have you developed your career? Because I went to arts, an art school. Okay. How has your career developed? Tell me about the 10 years you've spent outside of university. And it was crazy because that doesn't feel like that long ago to me. I haven't developed that much in the brain. <laughs> and I was there like these, like they looked like children looking up at me being like, so what's it like? And I'm like, it's a bit shit to be fair. Like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I, I, why are you all treating me like I'm an adult? It was insane. It made me feel very <laughs> old. Like we're just like so excited to get out there in the real world. And it's like, don't. <laughs> no. Yeah. Stay in, stay in your safe little uni bubble. It's nice. Yeah, it's hundred percent. Kind of the same with less structure. Mm. Like that's yeah, it. Pretty much. Yeah, but it's kind of more yeah. your. What did you study at uni? Are you allowed? Do you talk about that stuff? Yeah. <laughs> allowed. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we ready. don't have. Uh, yeah. Hide it in case they find out. Our editor yeah, breathing no, down I, our neck. Like no. I studied uh, media production. Oh, sick. So like everything from photography to filming to like camera work. Oh, that's cool. That's so cool. Fun. Yeah, I'm That's actually awesome. using it as well in my career, which is rare. How good's that? And, that? and now you do an audio-only podcast. But... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did English and Russian at uni, and uh, Russian it is not applicable. Yeah, not applicable in my daily life, and I'm kind of grateful for that right now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, the Russian thing. Um, it's quite funny. People expected me to have like this weird, like pro Putin stance when obviously everything kicked off. They're like, "So, how do you feel about the war in Ukraine?" That's... And I'm like, "Dude, no, I like, come on. Just because I've been to Russia doesn't mean they didn't recruit me." Yeah, it's like I like <laughs> I like vodka, but that doesn't mean that I'm taking down a country. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's spreading Russian propaganda through a yeah. podcast where we talk about labyrinth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just I tried to try to slip slip in like yeah the pro the pro Putin stuff when you're not mm. when you're not concentrating. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's how hopefully... he that's how he'd want you to do it too. Yeah. But next yeah. next year I'm hoping to apply for a um pre-doctoral in applied health sciences. Oh my god, so that's so cool. <laughs> that's so um, cool. Yeah. I I don't want to don't want to jinx it cuz I haven't obviously applied yet. But, no, that's amazing. Yeah. That's so, so awesome. Taking a taking a side step, but yeah, not as not as relevant to the podcast. But it comes up every now and then, I guess, yeah. if we talk about homeless people and drugs. But Which not a massive thing in, day, in in. We could talk about we could talk about drugs in this film. I think we could talk yeah, about drugs. Yeah. Drugs yeah. 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 Had you all seen it you. before? I, I yeah yeah yeah. I, yeah. I saw it. I think uh, I went to um, and this is the fun segment of the po- po- podcast called Helena had a posh upbringing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I watched that. about three quarters of it at boarding school when I was. <gasps> you went to boarding school. Yeah, for I was posh for like too. Two years. I had a posh upbringing too, but it wasn't that posh. <laughs> that was like what? That's what? Um, that's what people. I went to a private girls' school, mm-hmm. and that's what parents wanted for their children. What you had. Um, but they just couldn't afford it with their fourteen thousand dollars a year that they were spending men- mental yeah. money. Um, it is but, crazy, isn't it? No, I yeah. I only boarded on and off. It was like um, I boarded every Tuesday um, mm. because my mum. What was the food masters. like? Fine, oh, lovely. Yeah, we had. Um, yeah, I mean, like school canteen food, mm. but quite good quality. That's I don't great. Have any problems with it? I remember we had roast dinner every Thursday and fish and chips every Friday. That's mad. I love and fish and chips. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah that sounds <laughs> it was, sick. It was I a lovely experience when I was. Mm. I only went to that boarding school for two years, and then I went into state school after was that it, because we transitioned it, from year when you're at year seven, mm. you go into um, secondary school. And oh yeah. I I, th- I basically I lived next to incredibly shit primary schools, but yep. really good secondary schools. So my parents were like, "We can afford because it's a lot cheaper in primary school, like yep. to do it privately," and then 
move her into like and that gave me a good what a cool experience yeah it was, it was good i mean it it was a lot but it was uh yeah it's tough, a lot tough, when you look I was, when you look I knew back some on very it rich people like i was not a rich person at this private school like you and me both yeah. baby i i was the same <laughs> i went to i'm not trying to say that i wasn't well like i mean i went to an all girls private school but i was not rich in comparison to some of the people i went to school with so i got the exp- i was exposed to that life yeah. but i didn't really live it but it's only now as an adult i look back and recognize like what a cool, cool experience. No, no, what a um privileged position, I suppose it was. But uh, a world I got to kind of have a look into that was uh, fascinating. Yeah, in I've the grand some scheme of the from world. Primary school on like Facebook because I'm old. Yeah, just to reiterate, we've Facebook. all, we've all, and, and we've yeah. all, <laughs> mate, we've all gotten to the point where we've all recognised that we're all old as fuck. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, kids these days don't have Facebook which yeah. is just wild to me because I wish I didn't have Facebook. Yeah, good. Keep them away from it. <laughs> but I've had it for 10 years and like the memories now, it's like 12 years ago today and I'm like, no, no Facebook. No, I don't want to see that. My Facebook got hacked two weeks ago and like whoever hacked it then deleted it completely, deleted my messenger. I cannot act. It's disappeared. It's gone. Like it's literally gone. And it has oh. been so freeing. Ah, well, yeah. yeah there is Although the other day I was like, oh my God, I wonder what that person's up to. And I'm like, I can't even check. I used yeah. to stalk everyone I went to school with. All the rich people they do I a went lot to of school skiing. with. Yeah, there's a lot of skiing. A lot um, of skiing. A lot of fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot yeah, of a parties. Lot of nice parties on stuff. rooftops. Yeah. 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 No, I anyway, Labyrinth's a good but... film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Labyrinth is great. So yeah, watched it. This I'm, is, all this I remember is, is with guests. <laughs> I remember sort of the the very initial. Like I remember the the riddle. Are we the, okay, we're talking about Labyrinth ask. again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. No, no, not the riddle. The riddle. <laughs> that was for a second, there, I was like, wait, what? Um, that's how. Yeah, it's it's like Hogwarts. You know, that's how you get into the the room mm-hmm. to sleep at night. Yeah. Um, we all yeah. have a handshake. Um, I remember the the if you were to ask the other one the question what would they say i remember that bit i think because it came up in school or like as well um and then like will this door lead me to the castle or will this door lead me to a certain death that part yeah yeah Mm. and i also remember the looks can be deceiving like right at the start when she first goes into the labyrinth and it's like you can't she can't find the exit and then someone's like well look if you just walk and then it's like a visual it's just um camouflaged Mm-hmm. And like, yeah. I remember thinking Which that works was so really well cool. from it, it works really well from the camera's perspective, but surely from her actual perspective, it would not mm. look like that. Mm. <laughs> Don't ruin the so, magic yeah. of Labyrinth. <laughs> <laughs> it well, tries so hard to ruin it in so many other ways. Yeah, yeah but I think, like, isn't I, it, <laughs> I, I think one of the reasons why, um, obviously this movie... So I have a movie-based podcast myself, right? And what I've realised in doing that movie-based podcast is... The importance of if you want to watch film, um, God, I'm going to sound like such a wanker now, but to watch it for the time in which it was set, like mm-hmm. uh, yeah. it's the same. Like if you watch American Pie, right? Mm. American Pie is wildly mm. sexist, like homophobic, sexist, awful, right? However, it was made in the mid '90s or the late '90s or whatever when those that kind of humour was not only just accepted but was completely embraced and welcomed as good cinema. And as much as I can watch it now in, you know, 2023 and be like, wow, that makes me feel awful about having a vagina, it's, you've got to kind of go, well, in, in 1997 or whenever it was, that probably was funny. And also, like, you know, whatever. I forgot the point I was going to make. Oh, yeah, Labyrinth. <laughs> what I love about it, though. And what I love about Jim Henson and what I love about the Muppets, because I was a mm. massive Muppets fan when I was a kid, um, is that they are really good at making you just completely forget that there's someone with their hand up that thing's ass yeah. oh, or there's yeah. someone inside <laughs> yeah. that thing. You just completely forget that that – it's like it really is like the closest thing you – like. As a kid, I think uh, to like magic in cinema is that like mm. I'm just going to completely ignore that there is someone else in this scene with Jennifer Connolly and that weird little uh, plastic thing, you know? 
Yeah. And you yeah, just believe the- these characters. You just believe that they're there and that Hoggle is this little, like, weird, bumpy, you know, piece of plastic with a funny set of pants. Well, I mean, that's yeah. the thing, isn't it? That it's easy to forget because, and it, no surprise it, with it being Jim Henson, these models and these um, characters are fantastic. And they, I feel like they, apart from the fact that they are glaringly 80s in their disgustingness mm. um, of how they look, um, they've aged beautifully because it's not terrible CGI. Mm. It's not like lazy. Like mm. they've put, so much work into making these creatures believable and mm. interesting and full of character that you are like you're much more interested in them as characters than you are as like oh why is that bit you know <laughs> oh there's a string there oh there's a mm. whatever there like oh that looks a bit dopey the only one that did crack me up was there is a scene with the dog and the dog like um He's being ridden by the I can't remember yeah. any of the names in this. Oh yeah, like Sir Didymus. <laughs> Sir Didymus is yeah. my favourite. Yeah, <laughs> and he raises he, he like he raises his what would be hooves if he was a horse to go like, mm. and it is just literally two very fake dog paws on sticks going, and yeah. um, it's it's that just caught me off guard because everything else was so meticulous that that bit yeah. felt really like, look, you can make these incredible creatures, but like it looks like you basically went to the toy, toy, Toys R Us and got a sheepdog yep. and stuck and like chopped those bits off and stuck them on some leg, uh, some sticks. Like it looked 100%. so bad in comparison to everything else that that distracted me. But then most of the time it's a real sheepdog. So it, it that was like, obviously it's not ever going to look as good as a real sheepdog. And I'm glad they didn't, you know, cut off mm. a sheepdog's legs and stuff them and do like, <laughs> you know, they could have, they could have gone whole hog and they, and they didn't. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I did like the like the cutting between where it was like clearly a real sheepdog with the puppet on the back mm. just wobbling around yeah. as the dog <laughs> runs with it yeah. to whenever it's actually showing Didymus and he's like actually talking and stuff and it's the fake sheepdog at the bottom. Yes. Yeah, like, yeah it was like you can't have both, it's just which makes sense. It, yeah. It's like trying to control yeah. a puppet on a dog, very hard. Yeah, but Jim Henson manages to do it. They, and you're just like, well, yeah. we'll just do it this way and we'll just keep the story good and the characters good and it won't matter. That's how I think about it anyway. It's like yeah. when you watch, um, I've all, like, Muppets for me was like my first exposure to comedy. Like the first thing I yeah. ever remember finding funny when I was like three yeah. years old or four years old was Muppets. I loved Muppets. And watching Muppets dance, and you really see it in that scene where – um the fire people who can take off their limbs and throw them into fires. Yeah. Right? In, in yeah, Labyrinth. Yeah, yeah. They just look like these weird manic little toys that are, like, shaking and stuff, but you let yourself believe that there are these dancing creatures because of how rich the, the characters and the tapestry behind the whole story is. Um, I'm still a massive Jim Henson fan, despite the fact that some of it's, like, pretty problematic. I'm still a massive Jim Henson fan because I just think that um, Muppets are so funny. <laughs> like, they're just... Yeah. And this movie would be fucking scary if they weren't funny. It's a scary kid's film. Yeah. Like, it is. Some, it really of it, is. <laughs> some of it is absolutely mental. Like, it's it's a scary kid's film. Yeah, it the is. The fucking hands well is the... Like, that was the thing I found scary when I first watched this. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, I, yeah. Wasn't, I wasn't expecting. And that really reminded me of um, that other film we watched that's from the 80s um the Return to Oz. Of mark twain mm. Mm. Who, um, whose favorite movie was that as a kid that was ben russell yeah, that was ben russell. <laughs> what that was yeah. his favorite yeah. movie as a kid yeah ben yeah. russell is yeah one of two ben is such a like colorful magical character why the fuck is that his favorite film anyway yeah. i respect ben so i i'm sure it's not that bad it was, you know, it was no. weird. It was. It was <laughs> very weird to watch. It's a very surreal it ex- film. <laughs> it explained a lot. <laughs> but that has some weird hand stuff in it as well, mm. and like hands, mm. hands becoming faces, um, and sort of talking and stuff, and it's really uncomfortable. But yeah, this like, yeah, oh, trapped in that tube. It felt so claustrophobic. And I'm guessing, like, was it just like, did they have loads of people around with their hands in gloves I'm assuming in so, a tube? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, and yeah that, probably. I'd l- I would actually love to watch some behind the scenes stuff for this film. I'm sure it exists. Um, yeah, I think there's a, a documentary on it. I just thought that that whole scene is basically <laughs> like Muppet nudes. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's very creepy. But a lot of this movie, like, uh, there's also, like, a shout out to the the constant synth throughout this film. Yeah. <laughs> that real 80s synth that they just, like, put everywhere. But um, at the start when she's like, um, I wish the Goblin King would come and take you away right now, and then she turns the light off and turns around and the room goes silent. They Please used do. to scare the shit out of me as a kid. Yeah. That was far more <laughs> scary than hand puppets and, like, Hoggle taking a piss in a lake and, like, you know, David Bowie's dick just, like, all over the film. It, <laughs> like, to me, the scariest part is that. It's that. And then all of a sudden it's like, what's in that room? Like, yeah. where did yeah. the baby go? Why did everything go cry? Petrifying. Yeah. It's a scary that movie, man. Mistake. And they build up to her making that mistake because you've obviously got the um, – De- not what they called gremlin, not gremlins. Goblins. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm awake. Um, it's the goblins being like, oh, she nearly said it. Oh, she nearly said it, and you're like, she's gonna fuck up. She's gonna fuck up. Yeah. Oh god. It, or, or, and you obviously know that like this is the plot of the story, so she yeah, is gonna really, say it. Really funny if that was it. it. Yeah, to put it down, baby down. She didn't say it and just walked away. <laughs> like, just the goblins Wait, this is like Aww. a big spoiler warning, right? We're allowed to say what happens in this film. But yeah. We, yes, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it's fine. Work yeah, under this, the assumption. This I'd hope so. Yeah. <laughs> almost yeah. black and white. Yeah. Also, if you're listening to a podcast about a film and you're like, "Wow, they spoiled the film." You need to reevaluate yeah, how you kind of we get listening. we get enough we we used to get a lot of DMs about it. We used to get a lot of DMs like don't spoil this and don't spoil that and now we just like do spoiler warnings up the top of all our episodes. Yeah. That's a... yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, Makes yeah. Sense. Hashtag #spoiler warnings for uh <laughs> labyrinth. Yeah. Um <laughs> but no, I think I think one of the my like the one of the main characters in this film that I love so much is the music because yeah. I haven't seen this movie in about probably, honestly, about 20 years, probably longer, actually, Mm. but I still remembered all the songs. They're so catchy. Like, and I think, like, you know, David Bowie's pretty iconic for all of his problematic bits and pieces. He's pretty iconic. And his music in this film is really phenomenal. Like, Dance Magic Dance or whatever is so good. Like, what a fucking tune. It's a great yeah. song. It's great, but it also just it just kind of comes out of nowhere in the movie as well. Absolutely, yes. absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and I mean that's that's got the eighties random, and now we're going to have a song in the film thing though. Yeah, it, yeah. It felt like we've they... got David Bowie. It to be a waste. <laughs> that's, not to. that's what it well, felt yeah. like. It felt like there wasn't plans to have music in this film until they got David Bowie, and they were like, we "Well, that's to. it." I'd love to know. I wish I'd. We- I should have researched this because I'm sure you could find out. But I'd love to know if this movie was made because of David Bowie. Or, like, he came on board after the script came out? Or was he in the pros? Because, like, he's, like, without him, like, who the fuck would yeah. play that character? Like, who would get yeah, it right? I, it's so, I think, yeah. um I think it said that they were looking at other kind of, like, stars at the time, but people like Mick Jagger. <laughs> and I'm like, that would be a whole <laughs> different, a vibe. different vibe. Oh, and, my and, and they, all, they all turned it down. And then Bowie was like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll do a kid's film. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> that's Jagger so Mick Jagger would have been horror. amazing <laughs> the, the film would have been a horror for kids yeah <laughs> even more so <laughs> um no go please I'm assuming you have questions I'm just railroading this I'm so sorry no no it's, no, it's all good yeah no. I, I was I was just gonna say um <laughs> like the the one thing that I remember about when I was first watching this movie so I I'd never watched this as a kid but a couple of my friends did so in like year seven year eight kind of time they were like oh we need to watch this and we watched it a couple of times and it was kind of when i was getting into you know liking movies and trying to develop as a person but in that kind of way when you're really oblivious and a fucking moron Mm. and you're like did you know that in labyrinth there's hidden david bowie faces and it's like yeah everyone fucking knows that shut up (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, yeah but that's because like, kids are idiots all the creatures yeah. are in her room at the beginning like yeah no shit <laughs> <laughs> I, um, after, after critiquing all the uh, the youth of today when I saw to, in, re-watching this I saw the uh, Where the Wild Things Are book Yeah, mm, yeah. I thought that was new when I was a baby because <laughs> I remember being given that book and being like how oh, old wow, is that amazing. book? No, well, it's in, it's, it's in Labyrinth. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was my favourite movie. That was my favourite book as a kid. One of yeah. my favourite books yeah, as a kid. Yeah, one of my favourites mm. as well, yeah. yeah. And I thought 
absolutely yeah like this must have come out last week and my parents just bought it for me but uh no yeah. it's uh it's, <laughs> it's in there um i think uh when i was a kid i was very 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 oblivious to the whole weirdness of the relationship between the goblin king and sarah like yeah. i didn't really consider it yeah as a kid I, I, yeah, yeah. You, you get told at the start because the, the weird like so is she in a play or she, she's just reading the I book think she's just like that She's I, um, she's incredibly annoying. Sarah's is so annoying in this. Film. Really, you don't like Sarah? Oh, I couldn't. <laughs> no, that's fair. Neither do I. I just was like. <laughs> she, she's reading. She's reading the book, and she's like trying to. Is she trying to remember the lines? I couldn't tell if she's like in a rehearsing for a play or whatever. Well, um, I, when I was it says young, about how the Goblin King's in love with her, and I was like, I do not remember that bit. Yeah, I think um I when I was when I was younger, all I did was go, oh, this girl's trying to get her brother from this mean guy. Who plays with like gold uh, with uh, glass spheres, um, and then all these characters great. But then when I rewatched it today as an adult, I was like, okay, let's see if I can kind of interpret this in any sense. I'm assuming, and I would love to hear what you all would have to say about it. But I'm assuming it's a kind of like representation of the loss of fantasy and the transition between yeah. being a child and being an adult and responsibility because she's such a little shit brat. At the start, yeah. she's such a little brat. Oh my god, lock her up! What the fuck? Um, I can't stand her at the start of the film, and then at the end, she's all like, "No, you know what? I, I will that. babysit my little brother." It's like, all right, fucking weirdo. After yeah. you know, getting knocked out and having a fever dream for a few hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they should. De- she should definitely go to a hospital. Um, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think, yeah, I think that that has to be the sort of the that yeah, that's definitely the story behind it because. You even have the scene where the witches, I don't know what they are, in the trash pile, mm. where they take her back to her room and she's just going around the room going, oh, here's your toys. Do you not want your toys? It's like, mm. oh, okay. Yeah, the, that kind of is it. It's like, oh, yeah, it's about leaving childhood mm. and fantasy behind and taking responsibility. Mm. Yeah, she's, she's furious at the start. One of the one of the, the key moments where she that triggers off the I hate you and I want the Goblin King to take you away right now is that um her parents or the baby have taken lancelot her one of her prized teddies and given it to him yeah um mm. and she's furious about that and that like selfish possession of toys is very mm. childish and that unwillingness to share something you don't actually need anymore no oh, yeah absolutely and that you should have outgrown with yeah. a baby who probably does you know need a toy and then obviously it yeah. culminates with her giving the toy i will say this to- though like I really like. I don't like her mum either, though. Her mum's a real bitch. Well, it's step-mum, <laughs> isn't it? a stepmum, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just because, like, oh, is that her stepmum? It is actually her stepmum. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's her stepbrother, isn't it? So that's why you've got the dynamic of like, you know, broken family child and you know, lost her mother. Yeah. Might okay. Have arrested development. But also, like the the assumption that your like 13 year old daughter or stepdaughter. It's just like going to be available to babysit for you because you want to go out to party. Beg your pardon. I remember yeah. when I was in high school. Um, I was in like if no, not even high school. I was in primary school. You're five and six. I had a friend of mine um, who had two older brothers and a younger brother, but the younger brother was much younger than the rest of them. Mm-hmm. So oh, well, we were baby? like we were like eleven, twelve, and that child was like three. And we used to go over to her house every Saturday night or every other Saturday night uh, and watch movies and sleep over because her parents would go clubbing. And like oh. my friend Laura would look after her son, like look after her little brother, like she was the babysitter. And like we would go and sleep over at the house while she babysat her b- brother so that her parents could go clubbing. And that is... Th- the most insane thing I've ever heard. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. what are you doing? Eleven as well is is a little bit young, but I guess maybe the combination of three eleven year olds is like one thirty three year old. So yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. It's probably okay. You and it was a safe. It was a safe area. Everything was fine. But still, <laughs> like, I, just because you have a, a teenager doesn't mean you get to go clubbing now. Look after yeah, your it's, child. It's, that, it's and, also, and also, and also, why are adults what? clubbing? Like. Christ, yeah, and Toby's I don't like, want to go clubbing. And- <laughs> fucking Toby, I've just occurred to me. Toby's like six months old. What the <laughs> fuck are you Toby. doing? 
Oh, <laughs> what do you mean? You're just leaving that six-month-old baby who's crying. They literally mm. left while the baby is having a tantrum. <laughs> Has no one... This is just occurring to me. What? <laughs> At the very least, stick around until the baby isn't having a full-on tantrum. Yeah, he's like, oh, yeah. he's, I've put him to bed. And it's like, no, you've put him in bed. In bed, yeah. weeping. Weeping for the loss of his mother, wherever his mother's gone. Clubbing, probably. But, and his, his 13-year-old sister, who he hardly knows, he's only six months old, yeah. is just going to be, like, yelling at him for stealing her toys. Yeah. Bullshit. I'm sorry. What? But also, also buy, your, buy your son his own teddy bear. I'm yeah. sorry. Actually, <laughs> I've changed my opinion completely. That stepmother. It, yeah, it is parentification, isn't it? What? And it's what? it's not fair on it's not fair on her. Oh my um, god, I'm so mad. What is she gonna do if something goes wrong? What does she do? What does she do? Other than like go to a goblin kingdom to save her brother. But like that's a simple yeah. solution. <laughs> what if something happens to the baby? I guess what if, you what call if someone nine actually one breaks one? in. Yeah. 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 And it's like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna be mad at Sarah because that baby's dead? Try and take try and say that to the police. When they yeah. come and they're like, oh, okay, your baby was kidnapped. She's like, well, you know, by a goblin king. It's like, well, actually, you know what? The reason my baby's dead is because of my, my 13-year-old daughter and I left her to look after him. That's not going to hold up in court, mate. That stepmom's a no. bitch. I hate her. And she's really, she's sort of negging her at the start. She's like, well, I didn't have to ask because you never go out. And it's like, yeah. I'd love you to go out. And it's like, well... No, you don't, because you clearly don't want her to go out because you want her to stay in so that she yeah. can look after the baby for you. So you can go clubbing. The baby what that she had no say so in you can, having. Yeah, so you can go out to your restaurant at the hotel in Portugal. Yeah. Is that what is far? that shit? <laughs> no. Nah, it's, it's, it's been totally a while. Fair. <laughs> anyway. That's almost retro news now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I do, I do sympathise with, with her um, a lot for this. Like, Not that I ever had any sort of responsibilities like that as a, as a 13 year old mm. but like she's the communication is so poor because she mm. is essentially transitioning from a child but she's not an adult yet she hasn't got those communication skills all that backbone to say no bitch mm. look after your own kid i'm 100%. going out and also she hasn't she probably isn't allowed to go out without mm. like you know her, the you know the parents talking to each other and everything and like mm. permission and stuff like that so it's like She's so she's got so many disadvantages. Like she can't mm. win against her stepmom. So mm -hmm. she only the only she obviously resents her stepmom, but she can't take it out on her because that's not allowed. Yeah. Um. So she takes it out on the on the kid that she's left with yeah. that won't shut up. Mm. It's amazing. Like, well, no wonder she doesn't want to be in that situation. It is really cool watching this again as an adult because stuff really slaps different when you're an adult. Um. Oh, yeah. Another part of the film that, like, as a kid, I didn't really consider. I was just like, oh yeah, cute, whatever. But now as an adult, truthfully, it's a bit cheesy, but, you know, whatever. I feel like safe spaces. You guys seem cool with it. Um, <laughs> the end bit when they're like, all right, let's go get him. And she's like, no, no, I have to do this part alone. And they're like, mm. no, 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 like, we'll come with you. And she's like, no, no, it's like, it's really my time. I've got to step up or whatever. And they're like, okay, well, um, I guess we're just going to have to go then. Um, but should you need us? Like, should you need us in the future? To me, was this really lovely kind of like, yeah, you do have to grow up, you do have to be an adult, but you don't have to let go of everything completely. Yeah. And if you ever do need a bit of escapism, should you need us yeah. um, for any reason at all? Why... So nice. I mean, it really yeah. makes yeah, sense. Yeah, because it's like at, gym yeah, at the end when they're all like in her room and that, and it's like, mm. yeah, she does need them every so often. Yeah, it's really Yeah, they have lovely. a little party and a little boogie, and, and they have those... um. <laughs> Uh, streamers, yeah, 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 uh, everywhere. It was, it's, re it is really sweet, and it does show that it is a transitional period. It yeah. isn't a, or not, it isn't a, a, a switch. There's mm -hmm. a period where you are trying to grow up, and like, hundred percent, she still, you still need support, and you still need love, and you still need, mm -hmm. like, to be felt safe and heard, and everything. Absolutely. Um, and she, she does get that from these creepy little goblin creatures. Um, I love that. It, and it's, 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 it's very sweet. It's also a life lesson that, like, it makes 100% a hundred, a hundred sense that someone like Jim Henson would put that like, life lesson in. Because it's so mm -hmm. easy. And, like, so many other films and TV shows do the whole, once you grow up, you grow up. Like, you leave your childish things behind and you become Oh, yeah, an Peter adult. Pan style. Yeah. He's so never many going back things. to Neverland. Mm -hmm. And it makes so much sense that someone like Jim Henson and people that work in, like, puppetry because puppetry doesn't work if you don't have childish whimsy 
100 percent Oh yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah Absolutely yeah. mate Sensible That's exactly serious. right <laughs> Yeah that's Maybe exactly that's right. That's what kind of a loser doesn't like the Muppets? Are the kind of people that are just like, well, because they're not real. It's like, it's but literally yeah. the opposite of grow up. It's like, can you just get a little bit of like magic back in you, please? Like, how but sad also, yeah, that you've, just... because there's a certain point in your life where you just decided to believe that Big Bird is really a Big Bird. Yeah. And when, exactly. yeah. Um, is a real frog somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you just let never, yourself it never believe really... it. It doesn't ever really yeah. occur to me that Kermit isn't a real person. Yeah, he's just yeah. Like, in my head, <laughs> like, they're he's actors. He's a character in, of, of himself. Yeah. Like, 100%. You know, like, <laughs> in my head, they are actors. They're like <laughs> paid actors like in every things. So, every so often, Muppets show up in things that aren't Muppets based. They're just yeah. there. As, and you like... fully accept them as characters. Yeah. It's incredible yeah. that like you see like uh, Miss Piggy in something and you go, yeah, though, that's just Miss Piggy. You don't go. Yeah. It's oh, weird that's, that there's a I mean, puppet in this. I, I, I didn't watch it because you know, fuck the coronation. But Kermit and <laughs> Miss Piggy were at the coronation, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, fair. Oh, that's so, so funny. <laughs> like, that's so funny. <laughs> I feel like Miss Piggy was only there for the uh, for the riches, though, when Camilla dies. <laughs> Probably. Oh yeah, you think she's she's trying to get herself in the in the royal family? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like those those adults that are like. I don't read and I don't watch cartoons and like mm. things like that. And it's like, okay, your life but, sounds really sad. But like, everything yeah. I just think that boring. if your reason for not liking the Muppets is because they're not real, that's mm. sad yeah. to me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't like I don't like video games. Really, I'm not a gamer. But it's not because it's not real life. I'm just a stupid <laughs> bitch <laughs> like, who doesn't understand <laughs> them. It seems a bit harsh. So, like, that's why I don't really like them. It sounds but... like you've just not found the right game. Oh, I, I play... I, I that, that, love... sounds, that sounds like I'm, like, trying to tell you you're not No, gay, no, no. So... To, be, to be fair, I do love The Last of Us. I've played The Last of Us a bunch. But that's yeah. the only game. But I'm just saying that, like, if you're reasoning for not liking the Muppets, you can be like, oh, I don't find them funny or, like... I don't enjoy the stories or whatever. Okay, but if your reason is because they're not real, that's sad. Yeah, yeah. I have, a, I have a leg- my legitimate reason for not liking a Muppet's Christmas Carol is that I was forced to Which watch is it. Which is because you're wrong. Yeah, um, we've not done it, but I hate it. I can't stand it, and that's because oh my I was forced God. to watch it. One, yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh God, it's like I've just. <laughs> that's the okay. same reaction I had. Don't worry, Muppet's Christmas Carol well, is the best Christmas movie. <laughs> It I is. had to it, watch it one year truth. on New Year's Day after a pretty hectic New Year's, and I was so hungover, mm. <laughs> and I felt well, so awful. And I was just—they were like, "Oh no, we have we have to watch it." It was like, "What? You've yeah. never seen it?" And I'm like, "No, I've never seen it." I'm have you seen the Muppets Treasure over. Island? Uh, I think so, but I've I've also seen every other ad- adaptation of um, Treasure Island. A Muppets so. Treasure Island is a ten out of ten film. I it nearly, I good. nearly picked it for this, but Brilliant. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, <we've laughs> but I nearly Planet did. And Titan AI. So yeah. you've done yeah, Titan AI. We'll... I've done Titan AI. AI. Sorry, t- t- uh, no, Titan, you don't. Titan AI, 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 AI has AI. has yeah. uh, John Leguizamo in it, and I do a podcast about yes, John Leguizamo. Yeah. So yeah. I've oh, talked okay. about Titan AI. That was Have you a seen it recently? Fucking you... awful, no, yeah, awful yeah. film. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> dog shit. Yeah, just checking. Just checking. Good. I'm very, it very was so careful. so bad that we delayed releasing it for a long <laughs> Like, it just, every time we had, like, a guest or a new episode, we're like, yeah, we can push that one back a bit. It's I think the reason, um, the reason why, uh, that animation, one of the reasons why that animation wasn't so great and why the, the animations I don't like tend to have this, it's because they cast voice actors, but the voice actors they cast are just famous actors. They're not yeah. actually yeah. voice actors. So they're like, yeah. let's cast Matt Damon, who's never done a voiceover job in his life. And yes, he sounds like Matt Damon, but it's just Matt Damon doing a, – it's not a voice. Mm-hmm. There's no voice acting yeah. in it. It's just Matt Damon yeah. reading lines. And it's like it's yeah. not – it's yeah. different. John Leguizamo was phenomenal in that film because John Leguizamo is a phenomenal voice actor. Yeah. Um, but That film's a mess. That film is a mess. Tony is yeah. an yeah. utter <laughs> mess of a film. Yeah. It's, it's a it's that movie's crazy. Did you guys like Labyrinth? I didn't I, hate I it. I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, like it's I I was when watching it, I was trying to think like, is it actually a good movie or is it just a classic that ev- a lot of people do like? <laughs> and I maybe it's kind of in the middle. Okay. Yeah. I, 
Like, it's not bad. Like it, it kind of. There was a point near the beginning where I was like, "Oh, this this probably isn't gonna be as good as I kind of thought it was." But sometimes we find with movies on this show that they fucking drag. Mm, yeah. And as soon as it kind of started to up, the, like get into it a bit more, it went by pretty quick, to be honest. So I think a lot yeah, happens. That's normally yeah. a good sign. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you look away from this film, and it's completely different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a bit lost at one point because I I went to go and make a like I went well literally went to go and refill my glass with water and I came back and I was like I have to rewind I'm actually a bit confused as yeah. to why they're in a totally <laughs> different location now and yeah. some, something's happened glance away um, the story's completely different but it's yeah I think it's I think it is a a good film and I but I for me like what hold hold up holds up is the is the characters is the is the monsters in it mm. and like how yeah. how they look and how they react and how much emotion they have on their creepy little mm. weird faces who was your favorite i love the little worm but yeah. also um uh the yeah the the dog rider i'm I'm yeah. not good with names no that's all right yeah. i'm Every... sort of badly he looks yeah. like a real budget basil brush mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah um he i really liked i did really mm. like him and i liked L- ludo ludo yeah, yeah. ludo was my yeah. favorite yeah yeah, uh, like as a the, sort of gentle giant kind of. I like the so sweet when build. she's like, "Oh, are you her?" And then he's just like, mmm, and then later he's like, "I'm hungry." <laughs> and it's mm. like, yeah, I relate to that monster. Yeah, quite a bit. I get it. <laughs> um, but I, my favorite are the knockers. Yeah. They were always my favorite. Oh, that's the yeah, they're great. <laughs> the one that can't hear and the one that can't speak. Oh uh, yeah, um, they're so funny. That's just so they're, funny. Yeah, like mm. the. The thing that came up early in the credits that made me go, oh, that explains a lot, is that um, Terry Jones was, one, like, the writer for it, like, one of Monty Python. And oh, that like, makes so much uh, sense, that ex- yeah. That yeah. explains so much. <laughs> like, mm. yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot okay. of sense. Are yeah, there's a own... lot of Monty Python kind of... Style. Random humour. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. This stuff yeah. just happens, and that's mm. it. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I think I like, like, 80% of it. Like I loved eighty percent of it. It was amazing. The acting, like, just <laughs> got to me. Couldn't do yeah. it. And I, I don't know if it's because Jim Henson isn't used to, or like, his style doesn't fit with directing people. Because the Muppets and like the Muppets, the puppets and like, <laughs> I just I wanted to see. There's, there's still Muppets. A Muppet, yeah, I think. yeah. 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 Um, I wanted this to see like his actual <laughs> co- canon. Oh yeah, Muppet. a Muppets Labyrinth would be fantastic. Well, mm. well yeah. if this was made now, they would have definitely had like a Muppets cameo, but they just didn't. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if he's just really good at directing like puppetry because the puppetry was incredible and all the voice acting and everything like that incredible. Mm. The actual people acting. <laughs> was okay at best sometimes. Yeah, yeah can we agree David that Bowie Bowie's a better <laughs> Yeah, Bo- Bowie is a better a better musician than actor? Is yeah. That yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but he's it's so camp. And oh, so no, he, like yeah. he's oh, fucking yeah. he is feeling himself in this film. Yeah. Like he's, he's, yes, he's loving feeling himself, himself, but he's he, I don't feel like he's taking part in the film. No. In yeah, true. <laughs> Uh, I feel like it's, it's very much like he's in a music video and he's mm. the one performing in everyone else's background. Yeah, absolutely. Scenes, and it's like he's not relating to well, yeah, cap- yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, and I guess um, that but- is quite good for like an egocentric king. Yeah, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I think it was quite jarring on screen when every. I think because the puppets are acted so well, <laughs> yeah, and that, that might connecting be, yeah. with each other so well <laughs> that he sort of stands mm. out in a in not a. It doesn't look deliberate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that makes she's, sense. I don't know if it's just because like her, the the lead actress. I don't know if it's just because she isn't used to acting against puppets, and it was weird for her, probably. But she didn't mm. talk like a normal person. <laughs> she didn't talk like any mm. person I've ever interacted right. with. I, I mean, I'm guessing it's because she was told act like a 13 year old girl. <laughs> okay, like, just just to, before we get totally <laughs> how old bombarded, was Jennifer Connelly? She's actually, she's 16. She was 16 she's in that 16, film. 16, not 13. Oh, yeah. yeah, she's no, yeah. She, and she's 16 oh, okay. as a as a yeah character as well as the. Oh, was she? I thought yeah. she was 13 oh, okay. as a character. No, so so 16, I feel is a bit too old to be rude asked. because she should be going out and having her own life. But at the yeah. same time. Mm. It's okay to leave. Like a sixteen-year-old is far more capable of managing an emergency than a thirteen-year-old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. also, a sixteen-year-old probably yeah. should be slightly more emotionally mature than she is. Yeah, it's Maybe. probably. I don't know, or just emotionally diff- in a different stage to where she's yeah, at. Yeah, that makes sense. 
But like, oh, this film is incredible. I loved the hand juggling, uh, contact juggling thing that he does with the crystal ball. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, just, did you, got did a, you um... read about that? Yeah, mm. no, I, the whole yeah. idea that there's just a guy stood behind him doing it. Mm. Yeah, so he's got hilarious. his arms behind his back, and this is yeah. this guy, like it looks like it should be a sketch. Yeah. yeah, the fact that the guy was doing that blind, like without being able to see what he was doing, mm-hmm. is incredible. Mm. Oh yeah, like, absolutely. That's absolutely just impressive. Um, yeah, can you imagine having that kind of skill, being oh, able to do also, something like that? I have tried contact juggling. It is so difficult. It's so mm-hmm. hard to like. It looks super easy. It is so hard to do. You, is that what it, that's <laughs> called when the ball goes from the palm of your hand to the back of your hand? Yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. when you, the ball doesn't leave your hand or like a surface of your body. Okay. Yeah. And it so just it kind of looks like it's still yeah. Juggling. Yeah. yeah. Oh uh, wow! And it just looks like it's still. It's really cool. It's so hard to do. Oh, I can imagine. And, they, yeah, yeah that... there's a skill like that. I um, I one time this is a while ago. This is the last time I ever learned a new skill. I was in my mid twenties, and I liked a boy I worked with, and the boy I liked uh, could solve a Rubik's cube. So oh, I went nerd. home. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, I went home and I uh, spent an entire Sunday, like. 12 hours teaching myself how to do it, watching like YouTube videos, reading about it, like all that, whatever. And I learned how to do it. And I went to work on the Monday and I showed him. I was like, look at this. And I solved a Rubik's Cube. He was like, wow, that's really cool. Then he dated my friend for six years. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, don't mean to lie. I have, <laughs> uh, I have not learned a skill since. That's, yeah, no, As no. an adult, new skills as an adult will get you nowhere. <laughs> That's, That's what I've learned. Devastating. I'm so sorry for <laughs> laughing. It's fine. Uh, no, no, it's perfectly fine. Everything worked out well in the end. Uh, but uh, that was the last time I ever... Um... I'm going to assume you didn't go ahead and maintain your Rubik's Cube prowess. I could probably still do it. It is a bit like riding a bike, but I haven't picked one up. I was traumatized. I haven't picked one up uh, in a very, very long time. <laughs> hmm. So not out of, you didn't keep doing it out of spite of like I'll be the best in the world. No, I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> no, no. Well, it I wasn't just thought... like an eighties movie where you're like, if I get better and better at solving Rubik's cubes, no. then he'll yeah. love nothing me. like that. No, nothing like that at all. No. And then along uh, the way, you learn that actually you can just, just be your yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just brought back a memory that when when I was a kid, I had a Rubik's cube, but it wasn't a normal one. It was of Darth Maul from Star Wars, Good. and I could never solve it. So the whole time, it was just this like fucked up head. How does that, that was shape? It. How does That's that so shape funny. work as I, a Rubik's cube? I think I don't even think it was like proper Rubik's cube. It was just kind of like split into, I guess six, like four, no eight pieces. So like four mm-hmm. on the bottom, okay. four on the top. Okay. Um, still couldn't solve it. I was an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> They're hard. It's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> I um, looked into it once because my <laughs> yeah my partner at the time was va- was into them and could solve them and stuff. And um, yeah, God, I I I didn't last the twelve hours. I think I did an hour of watching like YouTube videos and mm. learning the formulas. And I was like, this is this feels like homework. I'm not. <laughs> oh yeah, I, don't don't, like don't underestimate. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> don't underestimate yeah, the lengths like- I went to when I was twenty five years old to impress a boy. It was very, <laughs> very depressing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sounds yeah, like maybe, maybe these guys who are into <laughs> Rubik's Cubes are a bit boring. Yeah. No, but it it's does. so cool. No, Rubik's Cubes. No, no, no. Correction. Rubik's Cube. Like, you're a loser if you play with a Rubik's Cube and you don't know how to solve it. And you're just like, Ugh, and you just whatever. If you can solve it in under a minute, that's hot. That that's cool. kind of sexy because it means that you, you practiced. You've got stamina. Well, I think because I, yeah, it, I used to think it was cool until I looked into how to do it, and then it's like you memorize formulas, it's, and then yeah. I'm like, no, that's not cool. That's I, not a, that's not like a useful just, thing to do with your time. Like it's, it's, that's just it's a, basically a it's a part, it's a party trick. It's a I memory think, yeah. game, and yeah, I'm like yeah. the same I way. I don't find other memory games particularly impressive. I'm just like I, cool. I think it's cool if like you bring it up and you're like, oh yeah, I can do that. If it comes up and you're like. You know, I can solve a Rubik's Cube and then you just do it. It's uncool mm. if you do it and no one asks. Like, it's uncool yeah. if you're walking around with a Rubik's it's Cube. It's got this very much the same vibes people. as our old 
pal who was good at magic. Yeah. He's yeah. like, yeah, I guess it's kind of cool until I realize how much of your time you've dedicated to doing it. 100%. And I'm like, mm, mm, you know. Again, if... it's, it's got the vibes of the guy that cracks out the acoustic guitar and starts playing Wonderwall, then you didn't ask. <laughs> yeah. But again, if, if you have an acoustic guitar and a guy's like, oh, you know, I can play that, you're like, oh, cool. Walk around with it. Yeah. Bad person. <laughs> Stuff. Yeah, that's agreed. Agreed. You're on it, Mike. That's exactly. Yeah, right. is that? I don't know if that's is that just a very British thing where like you can't show off. Yeah, no, you're not we, allowed. We <laughs> yeah, we be humble no, or else. No yeah. joy in the world. <laughs> you're not allowed to be proud of yourself. Yeah. Like sit down, <laughs> shut up. Wait for someone. That's else why no one knows up. we do, do this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I finally you told a colleague for like the first. No, you time should be at the dead. I've been working with her for two months. You should definitely like, be proud doing of doing this. this Weekend. You should definitely be proud of doing this podcast. It's the coolest concept. It's so fun to read kids' want, movies I don't again. want people I know listening. Why? <laughs> we talk about it. No. You don't, don't want know. people that you know know that you do a podcast. You've done I mean, so I many episodes. I, just don't, I don't say the title. Oh, okay. <laughs> to be fair, I think a lot of our audience is like in Australia and in the States. So, Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, we get away with... Yeah, we've cornered no, the Australian not, not big in market. Birmingham. We haven't broken the Birmingham scene yet, and um, I haven't <laughs> been pushing it either. <laughs> but, That's so funny. Like, well, I think it's a great concept. You should be very proud of yourselves. Oh, thank you. Yeah. We're not allowed to be proud of ourselves, though. No, no, just really you're British, problems. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And us over here in Australia, like, nah, that's sick. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, so the reaction is, oh, you do a podcast. What yeah. about? And then I'm like, it's about movies. And they're like, oh, cool. Yeah. Dumb film. Podcast. Anyway, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I do a podcast about movies, you guys are my people. I get it. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I love, and I listen to a lot of podcasts about movies. Mm. Um, the, the thing is, when people ask, like, oh, what, what films do you do? And it's like, well, we watched a Bug's Life the other day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're like, yeah. Okay, they're not cool movies. <laughs> no, we aren't, I like, get it. Getting invited to see the latest Marvel film. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, we're not like, yeah, we're not getting press passes and yeah, going yeah. all over. Yeah, it's. But it's nice to have, you know. It's fun. It's lovely. To I guess. love doing uh, podcasts. Yeah, my yeah. podcast. I, I, like, yeah. I love doing podcasts. It keeps me, um, keeps me chatty. It keeps me fresh, and I. It's a good excuse to catch up with a friend. Um, 100%. I really, really enjoy it. So, thank and you for like, having yeah, me. Yeah, we have on. to be careful. We have to be careful that we meet outside of the podcast as well, because yeah. um, otherwise, sometimes mm. it feels like this. Is, we don't when you see each other. Very much. <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's also really it's... fun listening to people talk about their childhood because yes. everyone's childhood is insane. Like yes. everyone, like... everyone has those three videos. Yeah, yeah. Because we don't interview yeah. young people. We haven't yeah. got any no. youthful people on yet, so it's not like, oh yeah. So I just used to watch whatever came up on Netflix. Yeah, of course, um, <laughs> of course. You, you guys, and everyone spoiled. has three that was very specific to them. Like I remember the three. I remember, like, and there were other ones that popped in and out. Like I remember, my girl was one. Um, Oof! I originally, I don't want to watch I, that I, film again. <laughs> oh yeah, my girl's a lot. Um, I originally, uh, when you guys asked me to do this, I asked to do Drop Dead Fred yeah. because yeah. I didn't have that on VHS, but I was obsessed with it. So that's a move. But like mm. Labyrinth was one that it was like, I'm bored. I'll put on Labyrinth again. I honestly reckon I watched it yeah. maybe a hundred times <laughs> in my wow. childhood. It was always on <laughs> and around. Um, anyway, yeah, I've I, had such fun I talking had... about it. I think the three I I had obviously Black Cauldron, which I've I've talked about loads, which is a film that not everyone had the joy of watching. My parents certainly did on repeat for about two years, <laughs> and then we had Fantasia, which I we haven't looked into because problematic with a capital P, but we'll do it at some point. And then I also had Silly Symphonies. I don't know if you've heard of them. It's like a Disney mm. Disney shorts. They're quite old, no. and a lot of them now have been taken off YouTube and stuff like that. Some of them are quite. Yeah, not great, mm-hmm. but there were some really good yeah. ones as well. Um, <laughs> cool. And those I used to watch on on repeat. Other than that, it was the the Lord of the Rings, which we haven't covered because nah, too good. We know Those it's good. films are too good. You can't do mm. good films on this um, podcast. They have to be. But a bit with, bad. with the Lord of the Rings, we watched it so often that my mum used it as like a proof that we were really ill. Mm. Um, and it was like if we were willing, to, if we had to stay home, we had to watch the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and like to the Not point funny. where we would have been quite bored of it, bored of it as as children. But obviously, I still loved it, so it didn't. It wasn't like as big a deterrent. But Mum was like, if you were willing to sit there on the sofa and watch all of the Lord of the Rings, you probably were poorly and didn't and shouldn't be at school. 
Our so mums are that film insane. Like, um, I'll <laughs> I think posh... secretly my mum just... Re- well, not even secretly. My mum fucking loved The Lord of the Rings. So I think it my was just mom, like a... If I, I never pulled a sickie when I was young because when I did, Oof. it was so boring. Mum always pulled a sickie and had a sick day. You know what pulled yeah. a sickie is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but, uh, that's when you have sex with a sick person, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, um, no, whenever I'd, I'd, I'd actually have a sick day, my mum would assume I was lying <laughs> all the time because I probably did. I lied a lot as a kid. Um, and when we were sick, we were locked in our bed. We were locked. We were putting up. We weren't allowed to leave our bedrooms and we could only eat dry toast because if we were sick, <laughs> that's all we can take. So it was always a really boring time. Anyway. Yeah. We didn't obviously yeah. we didn't have the joys of Netflix or anything like that. So it was the yeah, yeah. Lord of the Rings or after if it was a you know two day or more long sickness. Thankfully, my mum didn't make you rewatch them every day. <laughs> no. She was not the extended psychotic. editions today. Uh, <laughs> I'm um, so sorry. We didn't actually spend a lot of time talking about Labyrinth, but I've like fine. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, it's that's, it's, that's, no, that's it's, it's good. It's fine. Um, I think we covered we covered the the main the main points. I yeah. mean, we don't need to go through the the, the plots. Very simple: is girl yeah. wishes brother uh, brother was kidnapped by Goblin King. Goblin King kidnaps brother. Girl goes into a labyrinth and to gets find brother. Back brother. Gets back. <laughs> like if we went through it, <laughs> learns step by life step. lesson along the way. If we went through this, I one feel step like labyrinth step, is one that a lot of people have seen. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's fine. not you like knowing the plot. I don't think detracts from it because it lays out the no. plot at the start. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. She's it's about how it's the told. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> She's um, doing a monologue, yeah. which is the plot of the film. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Growing up, we watched. Uh, we we had CBBC, like the Children's British Broadcasting, yeah. and um, mm. they used to show edu- edu- If it was a school day, it would be educational TV during yeah. school mm. hours. So you, yeah, you'd be like, yeah, I've got a day home from school, and mm. you turn on the TV, and it was just like. Here's it's maths blitz. time. Or like, the blitz. <laughs> I'd watch um if I could sneak out and watch television on a sick day. I watched Jerry Springer. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was 100%. on at midday, midday channel yeah. ten in Tassie. I'm from Hobart originally, and I would watch Jerry Springer and Doctor Phil. Yeah, yeah. yeah we we is that had, like the, uh, is that Jeremy, Jeremy Kyle? Kyle? Yeah, Jeremy yeah. Kyle, the equivalent, and <laughs> oh, Jeremy that. Kyle, let me get. <laughs> Oh, you guys actually had Jeremy <laughs> Kyle in your lives. Yeah. I didn't yeah. until recently when I discovered him on YouTube. Mm, oh, about, wow. Probably about five or six years ago. What the fuck is wrong with that guy? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like uh-huh. a lot. <laughs> a like, lot. what the, how the fuck did he get so many but seasons of a show? What an people absolutely. People love it. it poverty what, porn but like, and like. Poverty porn wrong. is right. It's like it's not even funny. It's just like yeah. absolutely insane. <laughs> it's I true. It's anyway. There was a girl from um, not the school that I went to, but there were there were two secondary schools in my in the town that I went to school in, and the there was a girl from the other school. She went on, and it was um, a DNA test. So who's the father mm. of her baby? And there were like three guys there who it, it could be, and it was need. It was none of them. Oh god! <laughs> and she was. Oh, I think she was fifteen. <laughs> Oh my god! Anyway, <laughs> so, <yeah>. right. <laughs> so, I mean, right. That was fun. That <laughs> so, labyrinth. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Let's let's wrap up labyrinth. <laughs> so out of out of uh, out of ten, uh, Dan, yeah. what would you what would you give this? Oh, I'd probably give this um, eight out of ten. Babes, I was reminded of <laughs> during this movie. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I like uh, most of that is just the puppetry and the characters and just like. It was funny in parts as well. You know, I've still got a little laugh out of the first time you see Hoggle and he's just having a piss in that pond. Mm-hmm. Um, but or, or the little worm where he's like, come on in, meet the missus. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, no, it was it, it was definitely better than I thought it may have been. But yeah, not like it doesn't have too much nostalgia for me either. So it's not quite riding on that, but still still a good enough movie. <laughs> Yeah, I realised I didn't have very much nostalgia for this, like, at all. It was just, like, there's there's scenes that I was, like, familiar with. But I did love, yeah, the overarching plot, whatever. But the um, the little bits and the very Monty Python bits are just such... That's still the humour that I did grow up on. Life of Brian being mm. one of the first DVDs we had as a, yeah. as a kid. <laughs> and watching yep. that as a kid and now watching that as an adult, I'm like, they really... 
Let me watch that. Life anyway, of Brian. Um... <laughs> Life of Brian was one of my mum's VHS tapes. Mm. So, like, that That's was great. on. Oh, yeah. It was the first time I ever saw a penis. Uh, yeah, I mean, to be fair, that's better than like it being porn or anything because that's yeah. like, I guess, slightly I was, more I, realistic standards. The, when I was like four years old, it was like the first, I was like, oh my God, that's a penis. I'd never seen one before. <laughs> it's so funny. Anyway, um, I love Life of Brian. So those those little bits, like when she, she draws, she's like, oh, okay, I'm going to not get lost. I'm going to draw arrows on the tiles. Mm-hmm. so that i know which way i've gone and like this little cat creature like gets up and is like screaming and like like for fuck's sake yeah. and kind of like kids these days and it, mm-hmm. those little bits like that really tickled mm-hmm. me during this film and i really enjoyed those um so i'm gonna give it like a yeah a seven cute little um worms out of ten <laughs> like there's yeah there's not much nostalgia for me and i do find david david bowie more distracting than collaborating in this film <laughs> yeah. um and i don't have much i don't have much 80s nostalgia because that wasn't the period that i was exposed to most which sounds weird being like from the 90s like we watched obviously a lot of like current stuff and then stuff that my parents liked when they were growing up so it was like mm. i missed a lot of the 80s and my parents thought it was like oh god we don't want to talk about the 80s um <laughs> okay yep yeah. So I don't have any nostalgia for like the eighties as a like a concept. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd watch it again at some point, but I I could leave it a few years. Like I'm not desperate mm-hmm. to rewatch it. But yeah, I love me a good monster. Always, always have done. Yeah, like it's so creative. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, Mish out of ten. Me. Yeah. Um, for nostalgia purposes alone, like it gets a really high rating from me, but I honestly still looking past a lot of the problematic shit in this film, <laughs> like the fact that he is an adult and she is a minor. If you look past that, <laughs> um, yeah, if you can look past a lot of that kind of stuff, I actually think that it's still fucking funny. And honestly, mm. f- like there's so much happens in this. Every scene, like once it kicks off, I feel like it really kicks off. And I like yeah, it's a boulder rolling yeah. down a hill. Like, yeah. And I no really enjoy it. it. Um, but I do recognize my score as reflective of the nostalgia of it for me. I do give We're it for that. a very solid nine Bowie dicks because it was yep. in my face the whole film. <laughs> Bowie ball. It really is. I, I was yeah. like, oh, I swear it. I, in my back of my mind, it was like, it's just a bulge. Like, it looks like he stuffed mm. um, socks down it. And that, because I grew up watching a lot of ballet. Mm. The, they do that in ballet as well. Dance I think as belts. because yeah, it's better to have like a a lump that looks mm. like socks than to have mm. an outline an of outline? a sausage yeah. shape. Well, nine there's, nine there's, bulges. There's, there's a yeah, but then there's there's definite sausage shape mm. as well in this film. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. it's just like oh, oh yeah. that's an actual penis, which yeah. is somehow <laughs> it's more shocking for it to be behind all that spandex mm. than to just see an actual dick in Life of Brian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I... Like the illusion is worse than the, the reality. <laughs> Not that I'm saying I would have been pro him just getting his todger out on yeah. the film. <laughs> like that yeah. would still be bad. But yeah, I I'd never seen this film before, um, oh. and I had assumed when people were like, "Oh yeah, David Bowie's bulge," it was like a a joke that was like, "Oh yeah, it's in it for a bit." No, it's it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot in this film. <laughs> uh, it's there. It's a lot. Yeah. Uh, and it's in this film a lot for a kids' film. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I think, do you yeah, give it? I think I'd, I'd give it like a seven. Um, awful, a terrible smelling swamps. Oh yeah, <laughs> Bogs of Eternal Bogs. Stench. I loved, yeah, it's I love the Bog of Eternal Stench with its actual anuses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bog, <laughs> that was uh, so cool. Like, yeah, I'm Bog not anuses. above a fart joke. Absolutely, a hundred percent. No, <laughs> but yeah, I think like seven uh, Bog anuses. Out of ten, yeah, nice. Because uh, <laughs> yeah, it was it was really enjoyable. I just couldn't get past the acting because it was just strange. Yeah, yeah. it's it's it such a surreal odd. film. I think because we're we're very spoiled. Or also, again, these days, like we have we watch a lot of very clean mm. w- like films where it's everything's very much as you'd expect. Even if they're a bit weird and bizarro, it's like they're clean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're cl- they're clean and tidy. Whereas this is a chaos a state. Yeah, yeah, this film is chaos. Um, and to the point where you can't even remotely guess really what the next scene is going to be if you've not seen it before. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a bit jarring 
but I mean, I, I, I enjoy. I did enjoy it. Maybe I'm glad yeah. you guys didn't hate it. Yeah. That makes the my inner yeah. child very happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think you, I, I don't understand really how you could hate it because there's so much because there's so much in it. There's got to be something for everyone. Oh yeah, for sure. But I guess yeah. there's some people that could hate more of it than they like like enjoyed. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. That was yeah. fun. I love talking about that. Thank you so yeah. much. You're welcome. <laughs> That's all right. Thank you for joining yeah. us, and thank you for, thank bringing, you for having bringing me. Us a, a, a good film. A good film. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. Yeah, no, we didn't... It would have been better if I brought you a ten out of ten film. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but... No. <laughs> no. That's that all right. We we'll like... do more Pit's Treasure Island next time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is a ten out of ten film. <laughs> yeah. That really is. You think? Ten out of ten not... aren't. Ten out of ten films aren't good for this podcast because there's not much to like talk about. It's just, just like, it's just a, it's a circle jerk of like, yeah, and this bit was good, and, and, and that bit was good. good. And how good was this True. bit? Um, you need that bit. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. That was heaps of fun. Yeah, That's you. all right, uh, yeah, Mish. Where where can people find you? Uh, you can like... find me on my socials. So at Mish Wittrup on Instagram and Twitter. Not on Facebook. I got hacked. Um, but you can find me. <laughs> oh yeah, you on add Instagram. all your fans on Facebook usually. <laughs> There's no one on there. Um, I also don't ever tweet, and I have a TikTok, but I don't do that either. Everything's on Instagram at Mish Whitrop. Great. And my podcast at Mission Zach. Well, um, you can find this podcast on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok at Hilton Pod. That's at H L T M Pod. Uh, we're on Discord as well. If you want to come on here and chat about the movies, let us know what your favorite weird bit of the labyrinth was. Um, and we have a Patreon as well if you want to uh, come and help support the show. Um, what weird thing are we doing for the Patreon this week? I, I know where this so, is going. Okay. Like, are we going to kidnap a child? No, Mish, this is no. going to sound really odd. Um, <laughs> it's going to involve child kidnapping. <laughs> so I feel like it, I feel like, it is the theme of the film. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, what we're going to do with your Patreon money is build a goblin kingdom. Um, and then we're going to have to fight to which one of us is the goblin king. Right. Um, Fair. Whether actually, no, does anyone sick. want to be in the spandex? Because you have to dress like Bowie. <laughs> I like to think that they didn't ask Bowie to dress like that. He just turned up, um, and they were like, "I guess." <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm very yeah. sure. Um, they were like, "Maybe not the bulge." Just like the bulge is staying. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, one of us is going to have to be the king. Uh, the rest of us are going to have to be goblin puppeteers, and then we're going to find a child to kidnap. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, an anyone? Anyone got any? You got any younger siblings? Nesh, that you're not. <laughs> no, if I did yeah. though, that would be the worthy cause I'd give it up for. Right. Thank you. Yeah, because <laughs> it's, it's. I think it's always better to kidnap a child you know. You know what you're. Oh yeah. Into. Oh yeah. <laughs> it it it's really the long game this Patreon because you have to wait for someone to say the the word. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, no no we're only going to kidnap a child that has <laughs> someone has said they want kidnapping. We're not yeah. evil. Yeah, mm. we're not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Um, tell us a little bit about your, your podcast as well, Mish. Oh, cool. Um, I have a podcast with my friend Zach Ruane, who is in a comedy group called Auntie Donna. And we talk about uh, John Leguizamo films, television shows, animations that he's done. Every week we do a different John Leguizamo film. Very similar to this pod. We basically just chat shit and eventually end up talking about the movie for two minutes. Yeah. Um, how dare and you? it's so much yeah, fun. So, yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, <laughs> mm. um, and that's at Mish, which, Mish. Uh, that's at Mission Zach, and the podcast is called Mission Zach's Like Wazama Rama. Wow, nice. great name. Good yeah. name. <laughs> you, did you practice to say that flu- like fluidly? Uh, no, it rolls off the tongue quite easy. We're very big fans. Uh, <laughs> like Wazama drama. Like Wazama Rama. Like Wazama Rama. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And it's now eight twenty at night here, so you guys get to yes. go and have your lunch, and I get to go and have my dinner. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry we have gone past your tea time. Haven't sorry. We? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. This has been fun. Uh, thank, thank you so, you so much, much for having for, me. Yeah. No, thank you for joining us. Bye, everyone.